Greetings fellow humans, I'm Martian Boo, and today we're going to go through the brand new balance patch that's full of changes for both standard and wild. This is a significant patch for a couple of reasons, the first of which is it's pretty big, there are a lot of changes in here, but also it includes some changes to cards that players have been suggesting and asking for for a very long time. So the goal of this patch is summed up pretty well by the first paragraph of the dev comment here. This patch is a little different than our usual balance patches, it's more about the general design, direct of the game than it is about particular power outliers, though we've hit a few of those too. Right now there are a lot of cards that can remove player agency and raise the power level of the game beyond what we want for a 4 set meta. We're looking at a variety of these meta defining cards in the patch, from OTK style cards to powerful AoE effects that make it feel like your minions don't matter. So yeah, they're basically hitting big game ending bombs as well as hyper efficient AoE. First up we have Arena Lone Ranger, which is going to 9 mana. For me this is a disappointing change. I I feel like the only way that I would appreciate this is if 9 mana is too much for this card and people just drop it. But the problem with Reno Lone Ranger isn't that it's too efficient for the cost so much as the effect that it has is incredibly obnoxious. So like, it's not like seeing this on 9 instead of 8 is going to make me incredibly happy to face it. it <laughs> I just don't want to have my board limited to one space and have all of my dormant things removed. To nerf the actual effect of this card, I would have much rather seen a text change to some degree. There is another change to this card, but it's going to get covered slightly down, so we'll talk about it there. Then we have Zilliax Deluxe 3000, the virus model is losing stealth to replace it it is gaining a health i don't know that anyone's gonna be choosing this one anymore without the stealth but <laughs> i guess this was causing some problems in rogue and standard you would get this out too early and then there was nothing that the opponent could do about it gaslight gatekeeper is going to four mana which hits the draw rogue and standard this is a little bit interesting because it gives gaslight gatekeeper to even warlock for wild which did already have plot twist but plot twist doesn't come with a body. It also means you could theoretically run both of them. I'm not sure that you would, but I'm certainly going to try it. <laughs> then we have Snake Oil, which is the token generated by Miracle Salesman, which was just a really efficient one drop. So it's like a one for two, two. And then it gives you the option to shuffle the Snake Oil into your deck for one so that you can get a new card. The one mana on this doesn't really matter if you're going to exclusively trade with it, but for decks like Sif or for just getting it out of your hand if you want to do a big draw effect it's going to matter you can't just dump it for zero anymore then we have wheel of death which isn't getting any visible text change but what's going to happen is the clock is going to tick at the start of your turn instead of the end of your turn which should make this feel like it happens in five turns instead of happening in four turns <laughs> then we have forge of wills which is going to four mana huge change for a wild i think especially because going second you can play a mountain giant on three and and then play this on four and copy the giant. This seems like a shoe in and that it's going to be really powerful in even lock, but I could be overestimating it a little bit, but I'm very excited to try it. Then we have Imprisoned Horror, which is going from a 5-5 five five to a 4-4. Four four. This isn't like Corridor Creeper, which went from a 5-5 five five to an unplayable, but I'm not sure that going to a 4-4 four four is still good enough. The 4 and 5 breakpoint is pretty significant, but it just kind of depends on how easy it is to activate this. You know, we've seen a lot of 0 mana 3-3s three see play in wild, so obviously a 4-4 four four is better than that. Questline Warlock was already kind of on the fringes based on the meta but the meta is changing pretty drastically with this patch so we could be pretty happy that this got changed for standard then we have timewinder serimi which is going from requiring five other dragons to requiring eight other dragons on the one hand this might be a bit of a light touch but on the other hand having played some of these decks a bit i do think that getting to the five dragons is probably right on the border of being convenient it's probably just going to mean we're going to need some more dragons in these decks which for a wild might not be a problem because we already have so many in the deck so it could be that wild is just slower by a turn or two but for standard i think you're gonna have to pad the deck with a few more dragons and we already have things like starlight whelp in there which i don't think are very good so obviously this is a standard focus change it's gonna have
have more of an impact on standard than it does in wild, but I do think it takes the wild decks down a peg for sure. Then we have Threads of Despair, which is going from one mana to two mana. This unsurprisingly ended up being a very powerful clear in standard. At two mana, it is probably still very good, but also we can run it in even DK, which is pretty cool considering we have that funny Death Knight hero card that I've been wanting to run in even, but there wasn't a really good reason to run blood. So yeah, now we can run some treads. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Speaking of now we can run this in even, we have Sickly Grime Walker. <laughs> so instead of a three for two, four, it is a four for three, five. Maybe if we're running a deck that runs threads, we also run Sickly Grime Walker. It is a little beefier now with the extra health. That's kind of nice. And being able to play this on four plus coin hero power should be okay, especially considering we can do it again the next turn. Even if this doesn't end up being a good deck, it'll certainly make a fun video. Then we have Sanitize, which is getting nerfed again. Coming back to even after we lost it, when you forge it, you do get one more armor than you did before. But I don't think that this is enough to make up for having to put Odin in your ETC in Even Warrior, so I imagine we don't notice this change at all. Also, we lose Trial by Fire, which is getting its buff reverted going back to seven. When a card gets buffed and then the buff is reverted, it does not typically get amnesty when those cards rotate to wild. The one exception is Magister Domgrasp. I think everything else ever, if it was buffed and then the buff was taken away, did not get its buff back when it rotated, even if it was plenty fine for a while. So I imagine even Warrior will never get this back, even if it gets Odin back. Then we have Boomboss Thogren. So instead of shuffling the bombs into your own deck, it now shuffles the bombs into the enemy deck. And considering this was played in Highlander decks, why is this listed in the nerf section? Well, it's listed in the nerf section because you have less control over when those TNTs are activated when they're in your opponent's deck. If they're in your deck, you can draw a bunch of cards after this and try to blow up all of your opponent's stuff. When they're in your opponent's deck, they have control of how much cards they draw, and so you might be less likely to see this. Regardless, I'm pretty happy about this change. I wanted it because I wanted to run it in Reno decks without having it shut off my own Reno stuff. So, like, I would be really excited about that, but that no longer matters, as we'll get to in a minute. Next up, we have Flash of Lightning and Crash of Thunder, which are going up a mana each to tone down Nature Shaman in standard. This change seems pretty light to me, especially considering how much slower the combo is in standard than it is in wild. I imagine Nature Shaman is at least still playable, if not barely affected by this. Yeah, I'm not sure. So uh, maybe maybe it's a huge hit. Then we have Jungle Gym, which is going down a durability. I actually kind of sad I never tried Beast Hunter in wild because uh, this looked like it was going to be pretty cool. I got discouraged with decks like that pretty early on and I just never circled back to it. Two durability might still be plenty good, but it's certainly significantly worse than it was when it had three durability. Speaking of wild, here are some wild changes. So the long awaited, long requested once per game has been slapped onto time warp. So there are no more repeating shenanigans to be done. You get one time warp and then it's over. <laughs> so while this does leave open the type of deck that would use like Antonitis or Giants as a win condition. It does eliminate the slow, dirtily take extra turns and keep taking them until your opponent gets tired of looking at you and leaves. <laughs> so really good change. I think Quest Mage was absolutely sucking the fun out of the air in Wild and this change alone I think is probably enough to make Wild fun again. But it's not the only one we got. So we also have Floop's Glorious Gloop is going from gain a mana this turn only only to refresh a mana crystal. I think that Floop's Gloop will probably still be a pretty good card in some decks, but for decks like Gloop Druid, where you would be dealing 50 damage with Forbidden Fruit because the mana gain could get you up to like 50, you can't do that anymore. While I very much support this change, it is kind of a sad time. It's the last big funny druid tool we had left after we lost so many <laughs> then we have snowfall graveyard and i'm very happy to see snowfall graveyard on this list instead of naval mine which i was very scared of so rogue would use snowfall graveyard in combination with necrium blade to make naval mine do tons of damage to your opponent very early on because snowfall graveyard triggers necrium blade twice which each time triggers naval mine 
twice. You get this compounding effect between Snowfall Graveyard and Necrium Blade that makes efficient death rattles become way too efficient. And we've already seen a death rattle get nerfed for this deck before. In Nathria, it didn't use Naval Mine, it used Kobold Illusionist. And so the Kobold Illusionist got hit, which left all of these death rattle tools up to still get used with Mine Rogue, which would periodically come back and be very frustrating. Now that it has Skulker, you can do 32 damage in a turn pretty reliably and it's just not a fun play experience to just get destroyed for 32 damage on turn four <laughs> up until recently i felt like the wild community was pretty divided on the nerf that they actually wanted for this deck a lot of people were still very vocally saying naval mine but in the last few weeks it looks like opinions got shifted and i saw a lot more people talking about snowfall graveyard thankfully <laughs> so we did get a snowfall graveyard change two more mana is going to make this a lot harder to cast early on you're gonna have a lot more time to deal with stuff like that and if you like those strategies you still can play them but a bit slower then we have some cards that were adjusted to be stronger we have manufacturing error is going from six mana to five mana so this is kind of like unnerfing skull of Gul'dan. that'll be cool sunset volley is going from 10 mana to nine mana which does make sunset volley better but really what it does is it nerfs the tentacle decks in standard so i feel like this should be in the nerf section so in standard what you would do with the tentacles is you'd play enough of them that all of your tentacles would have a 50 percent chance to cast that all of your tentacles would have a 50 percent chance to cast sunset volley and that's a lot of damage once you played all those tentacles but now in standard the only 10 cost spell is going to be flip the table which is much less of a win condition on its own so this is listed as a buff even though it's a pretty significant nerf to a lot of cards. So I think that's awkward. <laughs> then we have Mesadune, which is going from six mana to five mana. You're all pleased that this came at the time of the open the way gate change. So there's Vexalis, which lets you cast arcane spells twice. And this, which can draw Vexalis and split it in two. So between Vexalis and this card, it became worth it to run elemental evocation. Because as long as you've drawn one of them, your elemental evocations get you cheap Vexalis. And at six mana, Mesadune felt like it was just a little bit too expensive so that was more of a funny thing that i did than something that really caught on but i do think it was close so i think one mana probably would have changed that we would have been playing this in like 30 card non highlander quest mage to very consistently get out our vex solace and generate a million mana biscuits into a million time warps but because we can only do one time warp now i'm not really seeing the upside of doing that so we'd have to figure out a new payoff for playing a ton of arcane spells. Then we have Woodland Wonders, which is now going to summon two 2-5 two beetles with taunt. Seems much better. 1-5s are not very interesting bodies. I was not excited to play that card. <laughs> Fog Snout is going from 7 mana to 6 mana. This is the questline druid payoff that nobody ever played at 6 mana. Is it good enough? Don't think so. I also think that this style of druid deck in standard has been obliterated. So I don't think the one mana on Zoc is going to change that, but maybe I'm ignorant. <laughs> then we have Chia Drake, which is going from a 2-4 to a 3-5. That's a pretty significant boost. It does seem like a very decent card for like a Highlander Druid in standard. Then we have Hagatha the Fabled, which is going from a 5 mana 4-4 four four to a 4 mana 4-3. Four so what's nice about this is if you choose 5 mana spells to build your Hagatha around. You can play the Hagatha on four and then play one of the slimes on five. So it, like it curves nicer. Aftershocks is getting a slight change to its nerf from a few patches ago. Instead of costing one more overall, it's going back to four mana and becoming only one cheaper if you cast a spell last turn instead of two cheaper. How good is that? Probably fine. I don't know how much that affects wild. Probably not at all. Odin in the ETC is just even warrior is dead. <laughs> then we have Bot face, which is going from a 3-9 to a 4-12. That's a pretty significant buff. Could see this seeing some play in standard now. Maybe it might still just be way too expensive, but it should be a very cool card to cheat out. Speaking of things that might still be too expensive, we have Toyranosaurus, which is gaining an extra health. It is now a 7 mana 7-7, seven, seven, and its death rattle deals 7 damage to a random enemy instead of 5. So it's become the new master of 7s. I hope this will be good because I like the signature, and I like that it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. But if it does end up being good it will probably only manifest in standard then we have shoplifter goldbeard which is going from six mana to five mana and i imagine that makes
makes it playable and standard. The effect on this is pretty good, it's just slightly too expensive, and maybe at 5 it's alright? In Wild we have the Hook Tusk payoff, so it may be worth exploring some kind of Hook Tusk Rogue with this, maybe Highlander. But I'm not going to hold my breath. <laughs> then we have the Crystal Cove, which is going from a 4-4 to a 5-5, so now this card references unnerfed Quest Rogue instead of nerfed Quest Rogue. I don't know how good that is, but I may regret having dusted my golden ones. Crane Game, going from 9 to 8, this is pretty cool because now we can run it in even Warlock, so I'm pretty excited about that. I do think that it's a bit of a bummer this patch since the type of even Warlock I would probably want to play this in is Highlander, and even Warlock can no longer run Reno, so it's just lost a tool to gain a less impressive tool, but it'll definitely be worth a video, so I'll figure out something with it. <laughs> then we have Fly Off the Shelves, which has gone down a mana. I think that this is still bad. Fly Off the Shelves is kind of awkward because... <laughs> Fly off the shelves is kind of awkward because in order to make this a good clear you have to have a bunch of dragons in your hand. In order to have a bunch of dragons in your hand, you need to have a bunch of them in your deck, and you also need to not have them on the field, right? So this card wants you to have a dragon deck that doesn't play its dragons, which sounds pretty passive, right? So if you're running a passive deck, you're also going to want to have a lot of non-dragon cards. And if you have a lot of non-dragon cards, you don't have as many dragons to draw. So I, I, don't, I don't know, it's, just, it's such an awkward effect. I, I would much rather this be like if you're holding a dragon, it deals three instead of two or something like that at three mana. <laughs> or have it deal more damage for however many dragons you've played up to a certain point or something. The very specific way that this works, I think, is too awkward for it to function but who knows one mana might change it then we have papercraft angel which is going from three mana to two mana that is very significant for a wild which is already playing this i do think losing the extra health might be a problem for it but typically going down a mana is more important than that but as it was you could play this on three and it would just stick there for a little while so it might be that it just changes the way this card is played i do think that it makes non highlander raza priest a little bit more interesting at two mana it's much easier to cast so we could start thinking about how we would pull off a only new raza raza priest then we have treasure distributor which is already very good in wild but standard does not have the pirates that wild does so this is about to get a big boost <laughs> not only does it give the pirate plus one attack when you play it but this also gets plus one attack when you play it so this has gone from a pretty good new pirate for those decks to now maybe the best one um it's gonna scale up pretty quick and maybe worth the shadow priests that have kind of dropped a lot of their pirates to start considering some more pirates again and finally we have splendiferous Whizbang had most of its decks uh, adjusted to be more splendiferous i don't know what the changes are but the card is better if you're excited to play some Whizbang. i did skip over something uh, i was right at the beginning of the buffs i think yeah okay so all of the standard highlander cards are being changed to battle cry if your deck had no duplicates at the start of the game so now cards like frame will not turn those cards off and these cards can no longer be used in draw heavy decks to get their effect without building around the restriction as intended. I think a big shame about this is the fact that the wild ones were not changed to match. It's going to feel really awkward to play Highlander decks in wild now so first of all if you liked doing the thing where one or two of your cards you would run a duplicate of because that specific card was so important. You can't do that now unless you want to not run any of the new ones at all. Cards like Zephyrus that are getting used in the unintended way in Wild can still be played that way. I think in the case of Zephyrus that's a negative but maybe you like that and you're excited that it's stuck around. But also I think getting hit with a bunch of framesters and having your deck turned off is obnoxious so it would have been really nice to have your Highlander stuff still online when your opponent fills your deck with a bunch of duds so I, I i hope that that change will come around eventually it is much more likely to happen if the player base generally is pretty vocal about it so if you feel the way that i do that the highlander card should match make your opinion known respectfully and they will be much more likely to change it so the fact that the old ones don't match the new ones is preventing me from getting excited about this fact it's like you know uh it's not going to affect how i play wild because i still have to worry about all those things for my original reno and stuff but it makes standard much more appealing to me the past few months of wild have been some of my least favorite months playing 
playing wild ever. I have not been having fun and it's largely because of quest mage. So that's getting resolved. So I'm going to keep playing wild. But if it hadn't been for the volume of plague DK in standard, I would have already switched to standard. Since standard has Highlander stuff, a lot of the type of content I like to create for wild is available in standard right now. But the problem was there's so much plague death knight that I just can't expect to queue my deck without having my big fun payoffs turned off in a large portion of my games. But now the plagues don't turn it off, so this is an option for me. I do expect wild to get a lot better, so I don't know that um, now is the time that I'm going to choose to jump ship and stream primarily standard, but if this effect had been a few months ago, maybe I would have. <laughs> Overall, I think this is a pretty exciting patch. It is very hopeful for wild, but it's also fixing some of my problems with standard, so we'll see what Martian content looks like in a couple weeks. Wild does still have some other offenders like Questline Warlock that were not addressed here, but are getting some of their worst matchups changed. So Mine Rogue, for example, was pretty bad for it, but also Shadow Priest and other Dragon Style Priests are pretty bad for it. The Zarimi change does slow those decks down a little bit, so we could see them drop off some. And with less of that, less Fruit Druid, and a bunch more Highlander decks, we could see Fatigue Warlock come back in a big way. But for now, I'm hopeful. I'm really excited not to run into stupid quest mage anymore. I'm looking forward to maybe trying to get like a Giants thing going, seeing what we can still do with Time Warp, but that alone is a huge change for Wild. I'm pretty optimistic. If you enjoy Martian content and would like to see more of it, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching. So I would have liked to stream some Hearthstone today because we just got this big patch and it's pretty cool. But my wife just came back after having visited her family for a couple weeks, so I'm prioritizing that today. I think one of the funniest things about my wife being gone is it really showcases my food preferences. While she was gone, I ate mostly sandwiches. <laughs> so I'd have my yogurt and granola as I always do in the morning. And then for lunch and dinner, five times out of six, I would eat a sandwich. This did include peanut butter and jelly, but it's not like the sandwich was just ham and cheese or anything. Like I would put condiments on it, you know, pickles, arugula, stuff like that. <laughs> and it's not like I don't or can't cook, but when I'm the only person I have to please, I really prioritize ease over variety. I would much rather throw together a sandwich than assemble something I have to cook over a period. <laughs> this also kind of puts in perspective how bad my diet has been. Last night we had pizza and I hadn't had anything like that for a little bit. And I experienced heartburn for the first time since my wife went away, which I don't have every day, but you know, a few times a week. So it's been kind of eye-opening. <laughs> I'm going to probably make some changes and not have to experience that at all anymore, I hope. <laughs>